Saturday morning, I was up at my usual 5 a.m. The weather forecast was for intermittent sun until afternoon, our first sunshine after three days of solid rain. My wife needed the car at 10 a.m., so I was eager to get out with my cameras. I like to call these rambles with the cameras photo prowls. As far as I know, I coined the word, but it works well to describe a contemplative outing, primarily to look for photo subjects and opportunities, to see what the creator of all that lives will bless me with. I take two cameras these days, my OM Systems OM-1 Mark II, with the m 100-400 IS zoom for birds, wildlife, and tell macros, and my OM-1 with the m 12-45 F4 Pro for landscapes and close-up macros. I use the cotton carrier for my OM-1 Mark II and telephoto rig and have the OM-1 and short zoom on a Ulanzi quick-release plate on a strap hanging at my hip. My first stop was the backyard. I've been watching the maple flowers unfold for four days now, but could not get out to them in the steady rain. Our maples flower early, compared to the maples even a few blocks closer to the sea, and I always try to photograph them when they are in full flower. Since the lowest flowering branches are still above head height, the 100 to 400 IS, with its close focus just over 4 feet at 800 mm equivalent, works well. I even tried some shots using the built-in digital tel converter for a 1 to 1 image scale. For this kind of thing, where there's lots of detail to fill the frame, the digital converter works really well. As I was working on the maple flowers, there were lots of birds singing their morning songs. In fact, I was being serenaded by one very loud bird, relatively close. I was thinking Carolina Wren, and I finally had to track it down to see if I was right. It was singing from the peak of the roof of the neighbor's shed. I picked my way through the jumble of wild berry vines and pine trees at the edge of our yards and got a few shots before it took off deeper into the neighborhood. Coming back to our small yard, before I got back to the maple flowers, I saw what looked like a large woodpecker fly into the big old maples on the other side. Sure enough, when it came down to the mealworm feeder on the back deck, it was our neighborhood red-bellied woodpecker, which we have been seeing more often in the yard this spring than usual. After a couple of shots at the feeder, it flew up to the maples above the house to pick apart a mealworm, and I got a few more shots on the branch. Just about when it flew off, another large woodpecker flew into the same maple where I'd first seen the red-bellied. This time, it was our female hairy woodpecker. New England, or maybe just Maine, hairy woodpeckers are a size larger than birds to the west of us. I have recently reduced my minimum shutter speed for birds to one two hundredth of a second as the IS in the 100-400 in the Mark II body is certainly up to the task. But I was worried that maybe 1-200th would be too slow to freeze subject motion for the very active hairy woodpecker, especially the hammer action of the head. It worked out well, though. I finally got back to the maple flowers, only to be distracted by one of our eastern bluebirds coming in under the pines. By then, my hands were cold, and I definitely needed a bathroom break before heading out in the car further afield. My time was ticking. My intention had been to check the local beach at the end of our road for piping plovers. I had seen a Facebook post during the rainy week from Maine Audubon announcing that the protected piping plovers were back on Maine beaches and reminding people to give them space and respect the caution taped nesting areas. I know it's way too early for chicks, but I was interested to see if there were actually any plovers in residence this early. Then too, I figured that this early on a Saturday, I would still be able to find parking in the limited space at the end of the beach road. Later in the day, you have to park a quarter mile away and walk in. So I got out onto the beach and walked down to where the plovers have nested in the past years. I used the OM-1 and a short zoom for some HDR landscapes along the beach. I was becoming convinced that I was not going to find any plovers. When movement caught my eye out on the beach halfway to the tide line in a section of wet sand, there was a single piping plover working. A pioneer or a scout, maybe, checking out the beach for those still lingering south. I do try to give the plovers the space they need. They have only recolonized our local beach from the south the past few years, and last year had two nesting areas, one even further north, near the mouth of the river. I find that if I stand still, the plovers will often come closer to me when they're feeding. 
with the zoom at 800 millimeter equivalent and knowing that I could crop at least a 1600 millimeter equivalent I was able to get some shots without disturbing the bird. I did not spend a lot of time there either giving the bird its space. I walked north along the beach again pausing for some scenic shots of the driftwood and tide rack with the OM-1 to the second and newer nesting area but no plovers there. Around the point on the river there was a common loon and lots of herring gulls this year's storms have pretty much wiped out the path on the inland side of the dunes, along with much of the dune cover, so I headed back along the beach, sticking to higher ground. I stopped for a gull incoming overhead, switching to my custom mode too, which is my birds in flight and action mode. The gull came right over me, and I took a long burst at 15 frames per second. Then a tangle of beech rose roots on the beach caught my eye, and I switched back to the OM-1 and the 12 to 45, setting to custom mode 2, which on the OM-1 is my handheld focus stack mode. Zoom to frame, and then hold still to shoot. There was a song sparrow singing somewhere back toward the trail to the parking, on the other side of the dunes, two in fact, so I switched back to the Mark II and the 100 to 400, and kept my eyes open as I walked between what used to be a forest of beech rows on the trail out, and now is just a few of the hardiest remains, listening to the song sparrow singing off to my right a ways, when suddenly one burst into song close on my left. I turned and managed to get on it and get a burst of shots off before it flew. The Mark II and the 100 to 400 caught focus immediately, but it was only there for a few seconds. It just flew up to a beach sign a bit closer to the parking, and I took another burst of it there. The wind was coming up over the dune and doing interesting things to the bird's feathers. Back at the car, I decided to try the bridle path for a short walk on either side of Route 9. The bridle path is the old trolley tracks that used to connect Kennebunk and Kennebunk Port, running through Riverside Forest and then through the marshes along the lower Malsum River on a raised berm. It is generally productive for birds, and I found a flock of titmice just off Route 9 toward the ocean, and then some more reasonably cooperative song sparrows. I could not resist a few HDR landscapes with the OM-1 and the wide zoom, and a focus stack cap of moss with the Mark II and the 100-400 to along the way. On the way back out to the car, the sun was behind me, and I got to photograph several of the eastern Phoebes that like to perch on the weathered fence post in the marsh. Time for home, since Carol needed the car. Still, the morning was too nice to be inside. After a short walk down the block to a maple with low-hanging branches that I had spotted from the car, there was time to sit in my camp chair near the backyard feeding station. I used to have a pop-up photo blind out there, but I'm finding that this spring at least, if I sit fairly still in my chair, the birds pay no attention to me, and I have a lot better view than I ever had from the blind. I can pretty much count on the bluebirds, even when not much else is happening in the backyard. If I wait more than 15 minutes, one or more will be in to snatch a few mealworms. I have way too many photos of bluebirds already, but it's good practice, and every once in a while I get a shot that stands out from the rest, either because of the bluebird's attitude or because of the light and framing. This one, despite the clutter, is one that I like a lot. I decided to take advantage of the sunshine before the promised clouds to walk up the street a quarter of a mile to a little patch of wetland either side of a private lane back into a housing development. I'm always hoping for birds there that I do not get in the backyard, or at least not often. I know from the calls and songs that more than one pair of red-winged blackbirds nest there, but the males are not up and singing on territory. Maybe they're already mated and do not feel the need. I could hear them, and even see them through the heavy brush, but I could not get a clear line of sight. The pussy willows along the edge of the road are in bloom, one of the few spots I know around here where they grow. So I took some time to use the macro capabilities of the 100 to 400 IS again for some flower shots. As I was concentrating on the flowers, a sharp, fast shadow cut across me, and I instinctively looked up. It was a hawk, and it was low, circling tight above me. I quickly switched to custom mode 2 again, my birds in flight and action modifications. I used to have each custom mode programmed to a button, but I found that it's just as quick and easy to use the main control dial, just one click from custom 1 to custom 2, and I'm ready for flight. 
in the viewfinder, I could see that even though the wings looked very broad, this was a mature red-tailed hawk. I kept my finger on the shutter button at 15 frames per second and tried my best to keep the circling hawk in frame. It was fast and it was low, so I did not know what I would get. I'm fairly happy with the results, but I can see that my 1 1600th of a second minimum shutter speed was just not fast enough to completely eliminate motion blur. I've had success with larger and slower birds, and even with the bodies of hummingbirds in the tropics, but this close hawk was simply too fast. After processing the series, I've increased my minimum shutter speed for birds in flight to 1 2,000th of a second. We'll see how that works. By the way, I never saw the mouse in the hawk's talons until processing the photos. Did you catch it? So now I'm thinking it's time to go home. Nothing is going to top the hawk this morning. But then, as I was almost out of the cul-de-sac, onto my home street again, three cardinals, two males and a female, popped over the fence of the yard just there and put on a show, chasing each other through the brush. Though we have lots of cardinals in the neighborhood, I hear them almost every time I come outside. I rarely see them in our yard, so I'm always on the lookout when walking. One male and the female quickly disappeared over the road and into the tangle on the other side, but the other male sat long enough for me to get him in frame for a couple of bursts. Again, the quick bird-detecting eye-tracking autofocus on the Mark II made these shots possible, even in the busy brush and against the fence. Not the best background you could ask for, and the Micro Two Thirds system does not have the best separation between subject and background, but it is what it is. I tried, when I got the images up on my iPad for processing, to dim and soften the background behind the bird to see if that helped. Maybe. By the time I walked home, it was after lunchtime and beginning to cloud up. So just as well, I had a card full of images to process, enough to keep me busy for most of the afternoon. And that's what I mean by a photo prowl. They are not all as productive as this one, but I generally manage to turn up something worth shooting. It's a matter of attitude as much as anything else. Camera in hand and on the prowl.